Um, what do you think about OnlyFans? OnlyFans is the biggest friend zone in the world. Yeah? The biggest friend zone. It is where you as a man, sorry, you as a man are never going to sniff this woman's vagina. <laughs> you're never going to touch it. You're never going to feel it. You're never going to know what it smells like. You're never going to know what it, you're going to know, you're going to know anything about this woman, but you're going to give her money. Mm. That's friend zone. Subscription as well. You're subscribing. That's what happens in the friend zone. Mm. It's these men that have these best women, best friends, just my bestie, right? And he spends all this money on her in the hope that he'll get that chance. It's the OnlyFans is the hugest friend zone but in the you, world. But do you think they think they're going to get that chance? Because No, it's like, it's their way of interacting. It's their way, when it comes to OnlyFans, yeah. OnlyFans, it's their way of interacting with women that they could never get a chance with. Mm. These women would walk by you on the street, bro. Yeah. Like, these women are like, really pretty and they've done their hair up and this, this, this guy who just works at Starbucks, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, she yeah. just walked past him. She wouldn't even acknowledge him. But in that instance, he gets to interact with a woman like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just a friend zone where women make money. But do you look down on the woman or, or you, up, you think it's, it's a good job? Say again? Do you look down on women that do OnlyFans or do you think it's a good Sex profession? Sex work to me isn't work. It is... I mean, you can say it is in the oldest profession. It's like prostitution is the oldest profession in the world, right? Would, would, you see, would you say it's prostitution? Of course it is. You're giving, you're showing, you're giving sex for money. So they're selling their body. You're selling your body. All right, yeah. You know, uh, uh, OnlyFans is sex work. It's, it's not mm. work to me. It's you just selling your body. And if you think um, you've, you up your value by selling your body, it's never happened throughout time with women, ever. The more you've sold your body is the less that men have given you value. So it used to be virginity, right? Back in the day. Mm. That means you're untouched. Mm. Every man's looking for the untouched woman, right? Yeah. Now it's like, sorry, but a hundred men have touched you. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. I'll touch you, but that is it. It's like, it's not like, you're not going to be your wife. Like, what? It's easy touch. Do you know what I mean? So like I said, men are easy like that. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So, a lot of these women have gassed themselves off the fact that they've got subscriptions from men. But does it disgust you or anything? Or, or you, it's fine, you don't mind? Like, you think they can, they can women can do what they want? It's a free world, you can do what you want. I'm, yeah. just not pay, I'm just not giving you my money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm not giving you that attention. You can't come to me and say, oh, do you know what? And I say to you, what's your job? And you say, oh, OnlyFans. And I'm going to be like, great, let's, let's get married. It's like, no, you've got a hundred men looking at your vagina right now, like, tonight. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't want you to be my wife. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, that's not to say that there aren't women that can get wifed, but for me, the men that do, in my personal opinion, are quite sad. And I just think the men of this day and age are quite, I think they're lost. Mm. I think the men have lost <laughs> their manhood in these days and times. And, um, they don't know what manhood is. Um, I think they're floundering. Um, I think even when it comes to the Red Pool space, there's a guy called John Zerka, um, and he's just a cokehead. He oh, says right. it himself. He's just like, he does coke. He's got quite a lot of followers, though, isn't it? He's got a la load of followers. Mm, mm. He's just that, like, just a crazy cokehead. And he's just like, is this your lot's king? Like, is this oh, the I guy? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is the guy. This is the guy that you guys are following. Yeah. And it's like, he'd be right. <laughs> like a broken clock, twice a day, <laughs> when he speaks, right? But that doesn't mean he should be your king. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's mm -hmm. like, for men to follow, for me, for men to follow the young guys of society, to follow a man like that, to me it's sad, if I'm honest, I think it's sad. So do you think men, uh, when you say men, you, are we mean talking about young men growing up? Or? Yeah, young men. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, grow, like, like men in their early 20s or, do you know what I mean? Like establishing themselves as men. So you think they're lost and they're looking for someone to follow? They're looking for someone to follow because a lot of them don't know what manhood is. A lot of them, remember, mm. we live in a generation that we're told where manhood is wrong, you know. We're misogynistic. I lived for a time, I'm a little bit older, I lived for a time when we got told, be more in touch with your feminine side. Mm. I, I, I lived through the time where the effeminization of men started, kind of st started like metrosexual, this thing that used to call metrosexual. And it's just like, you guys are like chipping away at like the manhood. You're chipping away at the manhood. And now it's like men no longer want to be men. They want to be women. You have the trans movement. Now. You have a whole bunch of men, right? <laughs> Biological who now want to be women.
So do you think that's why these male figures are doing so well, like Andrew Tate, for instance? Yeah, because, because they needed something. He, yeah. There was a void. That's why Kevin Samuel's done so well. Yeah. There was a void. There were men that did, well, they were floundering. They d- didn't really, that's, oh, that's okay. It's okay because I have these feelings. Mm. I have these men feelings, but they, I'm told that I'm not allowed to have them. I'm told that I'm supposed to be more like a woman. But you said you know? woman feel. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the thing is, I know but, you mean. No, but it's true because men, <laughs> yeah. men feel like it's okay to just talk to a man straight. Mm. That's how we talk. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to be like, oh, how's he going to feel about this? Is he think I'm going to be offending him? That's why men can banter each other. Yeah. Men can talk about their shoes, mm. their hair, your weight. <laughs> cuss each other out all day. Cuss yeah, each other yeah, yeah, out yeah. all day long because they're not <laughs> thinking about the feelings. Right? But that's how men interact with men. Do you know what I'm saying? And when men are going, no, you can't do that. You've got to think about that. I know she's got a knobbly knee. You're not allowed to say anything about her knobbly knees. Like, oh, knee looks fucked. No, no, you can't say that. You, like, you can't say that. Knee looks fucked. No, you can't say that. And it's like, but that's how we speak. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So Andrew Tates and uh, Kevin Samuels of the world gave men a, um, an outlet to be men. 